Hello there. Welcome back. And today I wanted to do something a little bit different and give you a short lesson and an introduction into the science. It's not an exact science. <laughs> science of anthropology. So I have a lot of experience in this. Archaeologist for over 10 years. I have a degree in anthropology. Archaeology is my focus. Um, and I've been a field school supervisor, and you know, I got to travel to some different places in the world and dig up some dead people. Okay, but the, in, with, with the respect, in a respectful way. So let's get started. Today, we're going to begin with the actual word, anthropology. I'm going to break it down. What does it mean? And then we're going to go into the subfields of anthropology. So, let's get going. So first, we have the word, anthropology. anthropology mean? Well, anthro means humans. People, it just really means homo sapiens sapien. Us. And the word ology actually means like to study, the study of. So the word anthropology means the study of humans. So, in anthropology, there are other subfields, and like when I was in college, it was a few years ago, there was only really four subfields that we talked about. We only had four that we actually discussed as like main pinnacles, kind of of anthropology, um, maybe what you would break them down into, and so the first one would be cultural anthropology. The second would be biological. Or some might call it physical. So for number three would be archaeology. And finally the last would be linguistic. So these were the main four that we talked about, and they actually break down even further, which is why there are so many subcategories, actually, within anthropology. And also, um, more things keep developing. We come up with a medical science, we come up with a criminal science, and those things open new opportunities for specialized fields of anthropology. So let's break these down a little further. So let's start with cultural anthropology. Anthro is just a u word used by people who study anthropology to shorten it, so you don't have to write anthropology every time. So, cultural anthropology. 
cultural anthropology encompasses a lot of different things. Um, you know, the word cultural is very broad because it is talking about each individual culture within each um, country or religion or um, it could even be like a racial kind of thing. So cultural anthropology is the study of people. So anthropology, the study of people and their culture. So it's the study of human culture. That's what the word means. So maybe one of the things that you could think of that would be a sub category of cultural anthropology. The only one I can really think of is sociocultural anthropology. So sociocultural anthropology obviously is kind of, you can derive its meaning from the word, the study of human culture, and socio would mean the social aspect of culture. Um, it's such a broad subject um, that, you know, you could really argue that most things could have something to do with cultural anthropology because it is your culture. If anything, I would say that linguistic anthropology and cultural anthropology are like the most related because um, like in the movie Arrival, Amy Adams, I forget what her character's name is, but she argues at the beginning in the helicopter that the like basis and the absolute root of like civilization is language and I very much agree with her because without language we couldn't do anything else not being able to separate one thing from the other distinguish different things and be able to communicate that to another human being just, I just can't see it happening. So let's move on to the next one. So the next one was biological or physical anthropology. and physical. What does this word mean when it comes to biological and physical anthropology? Well, it is the study of the physical state and the biological state of human beings. So within this would be things like the study of evolution. DNA studies. You know, those are kind of the main two things that people would study if you were going to become biological or physical anthropologist. So a lot of things about evolution, this sub-study can overlap with a lot of other anthropological studies, such as bioarchaeology. So the 
evolutionary aspect of bioarchaeology would mean that you are like looking, you're, you're digging up pre-human uh, skeletal remains because you're trying to fill in that gap um, when it comes to evolution. Let's move on to the next one, which is archaeology. Obviously, this is my favorite sub-study because I was doing archaeology and I was an archaeologist. So within archaeology, there's already one crossover with bioarchaeology. Bioarchaeology, I'm sure I spelled that right. And another one, another crossover would be forensic archaeology. There's also kind of a new um, field that has become more specialized, that is historical archaeology. So obviously um, we understand this is dig pretty much like digging up human remains is what you could think of it. The word archaeology, the study of old humans, pretty much. So archaeo is kind of the word for like ancient humans. So um, that relates to bioarchaeology quite a bit. Forensic archaeology is a new field that has been coming up in the last, I mean, 30 40 years. I mean, it's been, you know, it's been cooking for a while, but it's now been specialized. So I think forensic archaeology is a really good idea for things like when you're digging up um, someone who has been killed and it has to be done the right way so the body can be preserved. So everything can keep its provenience, which we will talk about later. But the place where the item or the person was left in relation to everything else around it is very important when it comes to piecing together a puzzle like forensic archaeology would be used for. So I think this is a really great field. I got to do a little bit when I was in school and um, I loved it. So I'm actually going into the field of criminology. I like the scientific aspect of it. So forensic archaeology is something that really interests me. Historical archaeology obviously is digging up history, right? So digging up historical places, items, depending. Historians are kind of in a different field than anthropologists because they're looking solely at history and documented history and piecing together that puzzle while anthropologists are for some reason trying to piece together the puzzle of humanity. It's a tough job. The last thing I'd like to talk about is paleontology. So what can we gather from the word paleontology? Paleo, very old. The study of things that are very, very old, like fossils, essentially 
this is the study of prehistoric matters. So whenever someone asked me in the past what I did, I would tell them I was an archaeologist. And they would usually say, oh, so you get to dig up dinosaurs. And I would say, actually, that's paleontology. And I like to dig up people. Well, paleontology, although it's super cool, amazing, and most anthropologists have a special place in their heart for paleontology, technically it is not. This, it's not the study of humans, so. The next time someone says something about an archaeologist and someone says, oh, dinosaurs, you can say, actually, and everyone will hate you for being a know-it-all. So let's move on. The last of the four subjects is my second favorite. Linguistic anthropology, obviously I'm sure you can surmise, is the study of language. If I wasn't going to be an archaeologist or a primatologist, I would have wanted to be a linguistic anthropologist. So what are the, some of the subfields that go into linguistic anthropology? The first is, and this may sound, sound redundant, Anthropological linguistics. So it's pretty much just the word switched around. With this, you could think about the focus. This is studying the actual language, how it's ordered. Anthropological linguistics is actually studying the people within that culture who use that language and how it affects their culture and how their culture affects the language. So it's more of a study of the person, and this is more a study of the language. So that's pretty much it for linguistic anthropology. There's a lot you can learn from a culture's language, um, a lot. And this subject here is so interesting because you kind of, oh my gosh, okay, the movie Arrival, one of the reasons I love it so much is because she's a linguist, and she figures out, and she kind of understands that your language can dictate how you see the rest of the world. And so the aliens in the movie can see into the future, and it's because their language, which this, I mean, doesn't technically make sense, but the concept makes sense. Hmm? Their language didn't have an end, it was a circle. The aliens, they saw language in a circle, which was never ending. And so therefore, their perception of their world and time, their perception of time, didn't have a beginning and an end and therefore they kind of like broke into the realm of the concept that you know time isn't linear and that can be very confusing <laughs> and also it can get your mind in a scramble if you think about it at night while you're trying to go to sleep and then you stay up for like five hours thinking about how time couldn't be linear. <sighs> so, other people do that. 
uh, right? Other people do that. Anyway, so that's pretty much the gist of linguistic anthropology. The last thing I want to do is kind of talk about some of the subfields that I didn't mention that have popped up in the last few decades. Um, and it's been at least a decade since I went to school for anthropology. And you know, if some of the information I told you guys is a little out of date, I can't imagine it would be that out of date. It's just people, you know what I mean? This is kind of is a crossover into forensic archaeology. Oh my God. The words are so long. And forensic anthropology obviously means the study of forensics. So the the study of humans and the forensics that are can be related to, for instance, solving crimes. A lot of that actually has to do with forensic archaeology because having an anthropologist or an archaeologist handle a crime scene when evidence needs to be collected correctly. It's, I just think it's very important for someone to be educated in both evidence collection and also um, forensic science and forensic um, tools that can be used to solve something like a murder, a crime, something like that. So that one's become very important in the last at least since the 90s, um, because that's really when, you know, um, that's when CODIS came out, when it comes to, like, a fingerprint database, um, CODIS, when it comes to DNA and being able to amplify DNA, and also even other things like luminol, um, where you spray um, luminol on the floor and then you use, um, red light and you can see footsteps, you can see blood spatter, you can see if someone has cleaned something up with bleach, and that's all forensics. It's a science. Forensic anthropology, I would say, is more of an exact science. Another thing that I didn't mention is primatology. Obviously, this is the study of the word primate, which means primates. And this can also be biological and physical anthropology. It's even a branch off of that. Um, I put it in its own category because I think it, there's so much you can do with that. You know, you study, and I know some people hate to hear this, but technically people are monkeys not monkeys, we're great apes, we're apes. And this can also encompass the study of um, genetics. Um, it can encompass the study of humans and all different kinds of apes, monkeys, and anything that is like 98% related to humans, right? So this was a really interesting field for me. I loved taking classes on it. I did a study on a group of ringtail lemurs at the Denver Zoo. Had them all named. One of them didn't have a tail. It was so cute. So I spent 
a lot of hours there um, observing behavior and it was fun I enjoyed it so those are pretty much the main two uh, you know there's a couple other ones like legal anthropology um, business Molecular A A and like um was, oh environmental These are just some of the more kind of like obscure, specialized fields. There's got to be so many more that I didn't get. Um, but I think that's actually really good. Anthropology can be related to so many things because it's the study of humans that um, specialized fields in anthropology, especially when, it, when we talk about um, science progressing, genetics progressing, you know, things like that, then there's going to be a lot of fields coming out that handle so much information that they're going to need specialists in those fields. I'm kind of like a traditional anthropologist, which is annoying. We're like picking, picking a specific field of study and becoming an expert on that field of study is really like the ultimate goal of an anthropologist and it's great when you can you know see the world study all different kinds of anthropology but when you pick a focus and you really zone in on it then you can become the main source of information for that subject and I don't know there's just something about that uh, yeah this was my intro to anthropology thank you so much for joining me today enjoyed this relaxing lesson and I will see you in the next video.